and welcome back everybody we are here for the fiery finals of victory roads world cup of pokemon vgc sponsored by el gato i myself am costa and i am joined now by none other than gabby at the point with this final where spain is just barely in the lead right now i don't know how eric was able to come through that match but my lord did he because that was a battle of gargantuan experience between veteran players i know i cannot believe that was just an absolutely insane match but forgive me i just got to get my attire set up all right we got our birthday caps back on we're good to go so <laughs> but yeah i i am uh honestly speechless at how crazy that last match was you know we had two world's caliber trainers really playing mm. and uh, it, even though it was a 2-0 victory for Spain, it just was neck and neck the entire time. And looking at the competitors for this next upcoming match, um, I can only imagine we're going to see the same just high caliber skill for Pokemon. Oh, 100%. No doubt about it, as we are going to be featuring Flavio Del Pidio versus Alex Gomez. We're going to go ahead and get that next slide rolling, see the previous matches, but just a note, Gabby, Flavio and Alex, they're both managers of both of these finalist teams, so there's a lot of pressure coming down the line right now. Flavio's going to have to try to bring this one back to force that final game seven, just to go ahead and try to get that uh, reward of becoming the world champs you know i actually forgot that these two players were also like co-managing the teams and the fact that we do get yep. to see a manager showdown as well is super exciting because a lot of times you just don't get to see them play so uh that okay. only to the stakes of this match you know going into it flavio and alex did know that uh, if spain won this game they would win the set and they would win the world cup overall uh so there's so much on the line right now and i cannot wait to see how these two teams are going to match up against each other well exactly that and uh we're just going to go ahead and just check very quickly how both of these trainers have been faring during the entirety of this world cup tournament we see flavio rocking that very solid 7-1 record throughout this tournament whilst alex is rocking the 3-2 we've got some very interesting teams that have been brought on both sides i would say um initially alex does seem to have the more standard uh with regards to the meta kind of teams uh but uh, flavio does or has actually brought ho -Oh and Lunala, which I find very interesting, as uh, I do think they do have some very solid uh, positions and places in the current meta, dependent, of course, on the matchup. Yeah, and I like to see that how both these trainers have really used a variety of the restricted Pokemon as well, because I think that's a really good indication that both these trainers are very comfortable with the format. Uh, it can be difficult to swap between Kyogre teams into Zacian teams, Shadow Calyrex teams, into Xerneas teams, into Lunala teams, into Ho-Oh teams, you know, just name all the restricteds right yeah. off the bat, uh, because each one plays a little bit differently, and each mm. one you have to support in a different manner, so um, I, I love to see it, especially in these longer form tournaments where you do play over multiple weeks when players do adjust their Pokemon teams significantly between the rounds, because that just goes to show you um, how confident of a player they are overall, being able to adjust not only uh, you know, for the matchup at hand, but to make so many things adapt to their own personal play style. Well, exactly that. And we've got a battle of some very experienced players going into this. Uh, we're going to be starting off with Flavio's uh, player profile, as, of course, we have seen. Uh, he's going to be rocking that Kyoga, Incineroar, Rillaboom, Regieleki, Serena, and the Tornadus Incarnate form. Uh, it seems like a bit of a change uh, from Santino's team, I believe, which went ahead and did win um, the uh, Invitational. So Regieleki, I think, uh, replacing Weavile and maybe another Pokemon there too. Yeah, it is a little bit different from the Invitational team, but I think Weavile was a very situational pick for the metagame at that mm. point in time. Uh, Regieleki, as weird as it is to say, is just a consistent pick. It's a very fast Pokemon. It can deal a lot of damage. Whereas a Pokemon like Weavile, if you're caught off guard by an Incineroar or by a Zacian, uh, that Pokemon's going to get knocked out very easily and may not be as um, effective as the Regieleki is 
matchup. So I think this is Flavio's uh, choice to go for consistency over the element of surprise. And I really respect that because when you're in these big tournaments with so much on the line and you're facing a player as uh, strong as Alex Gomez is, uh, having that uh, consistency is way more important than the surprise. Well, exactly that, because there's a lot up in stakes for this, as Flavio is no stranger to um, the highest of levels of competitiveness when it comes to VGC 2019 Europe International Champion, the Top 8 North America Internationals, and the 2018 Leipzig Regional Champion, as we're going to go ahead and go over to his opponent for today, none other than Alex Gomez, uh, rocking the Zashian Incineroar Rillaboom, uh, that Grimsnar Landorus Incarnate, and we have another Pelipper on stream. <laughs> it's always great to see Pelipper face off against Kyogre and Tornadus because sometimes I like to joke that the Pelipper is basically those two Pokemon in one form, but uh, in all seriousness, I don't think Pelipper will be making much of a difference in this matchup. Um, if it does have access to Wide Guard, that could be something really interesting in Alex's favor, but uh, knowing that he ha he's facing off against Kyogre Tornadus team. Uh, the Grim Snarl in, and the Zacian in particular, along with the Rillaboom, are really going to be the key Pokemon in this matchup to keep an eye out for. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, Alex is also no stranger to top tier competitive play, getting top eight at the World Championships in 2019, winning the UK National Championships in 2016. That was actually, I believe, the last year it was ever called the National Championships. So, yep. uh, shout outs to him. I believe that title will stick with him forever at this point because no one can contend it uh but and also you know winning regional championships along the way as well well exactly that so as you can tell very hype match uh, going into this sixth one so we're gonna go ahead and get the screens rolling we are of course gonna be observing it from flavio's point of view so gabby if you're flavio right now in this situation are you feeling quite strong having the coyote or do you see any sort of obstacles that alex may be able to bring right now Overall, this is a favorable matchup for Kyogre, assuming a more textbook, uh, you know, common uh, picked version of Alex's team. Once the Rillaboom has been removed from the field, even if there is a light screen in play, that Kyogre, especially given it's holding choice specs of all the items out there, oh. uh, is going to be dealing so much damage to Alex's Pokemon. And uh, fortunately, with a team like Flavio's, you have the Rillaboom and the Incineroar to switch around to to keep that Kyogre safe when it finds itself in an unfavorable position, whether that be due to the Pokemon on the field or maybe due to the move it locked into. Um, I also really like to see that the Serena, another adjustment, actually has the choice band. Like, this is a very offensive uh, front from Flavio's side of the field, and it's hard to say if Alex has the damage potential to match that. You know, Grimmsnarl yeah. tends to be a slower played Pokemon. Uh, Zacian can be very offensive if it's allowed to keep the Intrepid Sword Boost or otherwise use Sword Dance to get it mm -hmm. uh, back. And I, it's tough to say if he's going to have that opportunity. Again, just based off of the initial Pokemon and the initial look of, at Flavio's team alone. Yeah, exactly that. As we are going to be getting the leads, Alex goes ahead and brings out the Zacian Grimmsnarl pair as Flavio is going to be going ahead and bringing his own Tornadus and the Incineral. So having that Intimidate, uh, being able to drop the attack of that Grimmsnarl to minus one and the Zacian back down to neutral is actually quite good for Flavio right now. It is, and also having access to Fake Out means that the Grimmsnarl may not have the opportunity to go for a Light Screen or a Reflect on turn one. Um, most likely, Alex won't fall for that trap. I think that you have to just keep it pretty safe when you play in front of a Pokemon like Incineroar. Uh, but still, a great start for Flavio. An interesting look at his move. Well, it does run Protect on the Tornadus, and you can see why he's considering locking into it right now. If that uh, Grimmsnarl is allowed to uh, maybe go for a Taunt or something onto that Tornadus, it would be a really good spot for Flavio to be caught with. So uh, by starting things off a little bit slower or relying on a speed control, such as a Icy Wind, um, he definitely opens up the field for him a bit more. 
Well, yeah, as we do see the Incineroar go for the fake out, that Grimstone will not be able to move at all. And the reveal of the Sword Stance there, actually really nice. Uh, being able to bring the attack of that Zacian from neutral, now up to plus two. As like you mentioned, Gabby, we do see the Tornadus go for the Icy Wind. It does successfully connect with both of its targets, which may allow more room for positioning and even maybe threatening that Zacian with this Incineroar. It's a tough call. I mean, I think that if Flavio were to go for the immediate Tailwind follow-up and uh, go for a Flare Blitz attack into the Zosh and Incineroar would outspeed and be able to deal damage to it, but I don't think that Flare Blitz is going to necessarily be a knockout this turn, and I think that's something that Flavio has to keep in mind, even though it must be very tempting to go for that big damage. Uh, the Grim Snarl is also still on the field, and a Reflect would make that uh, damage calc that much harder to unlock as well. Oh, exactly. But we're going to be seeing the Tornadus actually playing it slow, going for that Protect. And like you mentioned, Gabby, we do see the reveal of the Reflect. So Alex's Pokemon will not be taking as much damage with regards to physical attacks. And we see the Zacian, I think it actually evaded, or should I say missed a play rough on that Incineral. Um, quite unfortunate already to start off this match in that turn two. And the Incineral does go for that parting shot. I believe it went into the Grim Snarl slot there and not the Zacian but correct me if I'm wrong. I believe I saw that as well, but I also uh, was sort of thinking about that play roughness a bit more than anything else, so I might have also missed the targeting on there. Uh, yeah. But possible that Flavio just wanted to target down that Grim Snarl to see if he could catch it on a switch. Um, getting the Kyogre in here as well, again, is just great spot for this Kyogre. There's only so much that these Ashen can do to it on the opposing side of the field at this point in time. And the Kyogre should also have the opportunity to go for one attack here, given that Icy Wind was able to connect and lower Zacian's speed. Uh, a Water Spout would certainly knock out the Grim Snarl, I think, regardless of if Light Screen happens or not. I think that the Zacian probably will be missing that knockout, but uh, it's a tough call because Choice Specs really just makes Kyogre such a scary Pokemon and even has the Serena next to it to protect it from any prankster shenanigans. Yeah, and we're going to be seeing a double switch from Flavio's side whilst a light screen, oh, no, sorry, not a double switch, just a single switch whilst the light screen was set up. But guess what? Choice Specs Water Spout from Kyogre does not care. It picks up the KO on Grimmsnarl, does so much damage onto the Zacian. And at plus two, of course, the Zacian finally deciding to connect does pick up the KO onto that Kyogre. So the, the moment that the Kyogre was on the field, yes, it did do a lot of damage. But guess what? It just left the field straight away. Exactly. The Serena switch in there, I think it acknowledged Flavio that the Grim Snarl possibly would have gone for something like a Thunder Wave to maybe lower Kyogre's speed rather than going for the light screen. Um, unfortunately, did not make the correct call there. Still has the Incineroar and the Serena to help him out damage-wise. If the Tornadus were to come in as well with a Hurricane, that can certainly pick up the knockout at Zacian on Zacian at this point in time. And you know that the Grim Snarl won't be able to set up Reflect, which is also going to be really important given that the Serena and the Incineroar are both physical attackers. But uh, the fact that the Zacian was able to survive and pick up the knockout onto the Kyogre that turn is really key for Alex. Uh, the Kyogre is the Pokemon that this entire team is really built around to deal damage and to deal those big hits. And I think that the Tornadus and the Sur are really struggle against a Pelipper especially and the Zacian if they're not able to find a couple of quick knockouts this turn and if, I mean fortunately the uh, should be able to deal a decent amount of damage to the Pelipper um, and again that Tornadus most likely will be able to pick up the knockout on the Zacian but uh, it, it's a it's a definite uh, win in Alex's favor the fact that he was the first person to get that restricted Pokemon off the field. Yeah, well, exactly that. And I feel like we're in for a treat as we're going to be seeing uh, Flavio once again going for that ice wind. We do, of course, see the Tornadoes being able to outspeed, uh, maybe bait, break a potential focus ash on that Pelipper as well over on Alex's side. Alex does not seem pleased about this. The speed has been dropped as the Serena now, we know it's banded, ladies and gents. It goes for the Pelipper but with Power Whip, but doesn't even pick up the KO because Pelipper is known to have some very good physical defensive stats there to be able to bolt 
hold it up and take that damage but guess what doesn't take the damage that serena from the plus two of that behemoth blade coming out from the zashian absolutely goes and wrecks it picks up the ko we see pelipa now revealing the weather ball strat very very nice indeed very situational move it deals so much damage as uh, with the um uh, lovely uh, uh, secondary effect of not missing if for uh, example the pelipa decided to bring a hydro pump which it is known to bring sometimes yep it's a better move for that reason i definitely agree unfortunately for fly down to two pokemon and no matter how fast this incineroar is um I, I think that as long as pelipper is given the opportunity to connect a weather ball with it that is going to be a knockout i liked the icy wind play i think that uh flavio was trying to set up for the incineroar to have the opportunity to move prior to the zosh in this turn um and to go for a flare blitz and still hopefully pick up that ko even though it's raining out and that flare is going to be weakened as a result um but the fact that he wasn't able to deal enough damage to really remove the pelipper from the field yet is key and if if flavio is able to find that knockout now I think that he's definitely going to be in a better spot but zashin's going to be lurking in the back of alex's party and that's a really scary pokemon to have back there well, exactly, as uh, he's going to be bringing that Rillaboom now onto the field, setting the grassy terrain and having that fake out available to himself in the subsequent turn. As Pelipper opts to go for the Protect, we see the fake out into that slot, so of course the Zashian gets to avoid that, whilst the Hurricane was trying to target down that Pelipper, but of course was met with the Protect. So, uh, very stationary uh, kind of turn, but, uh, or should I say for Flavio, but not so much for Alex, going ahead and taking advantage and momentum on his side. Exactly, and keeping the Zacian safe in the back, losing that Icy Wind speed drop, turns that Zacian into a win condition for Alex. If mm. Alex is able to find a way to knock out this Tornadus, which either a Weather Ball or possibly even a Grassy Glide, honestly, at this point should be able to deal that damage to the Tornadus to pick up the KO, uh, then that Incineroar is going to be all on its own and it should easily be able to get KO'd. And it really, Incineroar's biggest damage dealing attack, Flare Blitz, at this point in time, it's just gonna be dealing so much recoil that uh, there's only so much time it'll be able to remain on the field. Yeah, oh. just the, the fake out, actually, and try to go into the Tornado slot, it will be able to flinch it, but we get a reveal of a Wiki Berry on the Tornadoes, suggesting that it is very bulky, as we do see the Parting Shot going into the Pelipper slot. I'm not sure if Pelipper did try to go for a move. No, it did not go just yet. It does, however, go now for the Weather Ball into the Incineral slot, picking up the one-hit KO, Gabby, in the rain. Such a powerful, powerful Pokemon, which uh, you don't commonly expect, as it is is boosted by that rain it is it is boosted by the rain and even though it was slower than the incineroar thanks to that ice wind it just and it had the special attack drop from the parting shop on shot on top of that yeah. uh, pelipper is just a really great pokemon for zashin team in particular since it synergizes so well in its matchup against incineroar yeah, as we are going to be seeing Alex go ahead and pick up that first win of the game. Spain pushing forwards. They are gaining a lot of momentum. And this may come to the situation where if Alex goes ahead and win this, uh, wins this set for them, Spain will be crowned the world champions. They will be. And the fact that Alex was able to win that matchup so comfortably, I think, goes back to that turn where the Zacian was able to knock out that Kyogre, and mm. I believe Flavio just miscalculated that water spout, assuming it would still have been enough to pick up the knockout on Zacian, even through the light screen, or again, yeah. possibly that the Grim Snarl would have foregone the light screen entirely. Uh, going into game two, I mean, Pokemon-wise, I think still at an advantage you know this is just an easier matchup when you have that kyogre with the choice specs and speed control to support it uh but flavio needs to be very careful around the grim Snarl and the zashin uh if the kyogre strategy is going to be one that goes for again i think you have to assume that light screen will be active on the field when you go for that big attack and go to get that chip damage down on zashin first as a result i think he can do that i mean the tor does uh, we haven't seen it yet but the tornadoes does have a flying type it's either a hurricane or an air slash yep. uh can go for that and that probably will do enough damage um you could also see a flare blitz connect with that zashin as well to put it into knockout range 
So Flavio certainly does have but he just has to play, assuming that light screen will be active. On Alex's side of the field, I think that the that game one was strong, and the fact that he waited to set up light screen in particular I really threw Flavio off. A lot of times these Grimmsnarl trainers, knowing that they're holding light clay, will just set up screens immediately so that uh, they're up when you need them to, to be up, and mm -hmm. that you have the duration thanks to the, the light clay that they'll last the entire game. So uh, could continue to follow that strategy here if he wants uh, playing that mental game mm -hmm. against Flavio as it's same leads. Yeah, same lead. So Alex thinking Zacian is the most suitable Pokemon to bring right now, but Flavia being able to rival that with that Incineroar, able to bring that Intrepid Sword ability, essentially nullified in this situation and allowing the Zacian now to be at neutral, whilst Grimmsnarl is at minus one. But as we have seen from game one, Gabby, I feel that um, it's more situational for Alex. He wants to try to make sure that he gets those screens up as they do really mitigate that damage output. That Flavia has to offer. Exactly. And if you think back to turn one, game one, we saw the Zacian take this opportunity to go for a sword stance to get to plus two attack, which also really made a difference when it came to the damage output that it was doing. It's possible that Behemoth Blade would have honestly missed the knockout on Kyogre if it hadn't been for that. Uh, so Alex already mixing things up with a switch as we saw Flavio actually target down that Zacian, probably looking to get that little bit of chip damage that we discussed earlier. Yeah, so I do like Alex's switch up right now, not opting to go for that sword stance. It goes for the Pelipper switch and brings the rain, and we actually see the light screen being set up from that Grim Snarl. Uh, as the Tornadus goes for the Icy Wind, and uh, we hadn't actually seen the Incineroar go for the fake out, so like you mentioned, Gabby, I think that parting shot is uh, key right now to try to get that damage mitigation uh, over on Alex's side instead. But no, actually, apologies. We just see the Flare Blitz picking up a burn, which is quite nice for residual damage over time but of course it is not the target it wanted to find especially as the rain is set so in this scenario alex has a lot of momentum he feels good about this situation he's got one of his two screens up and it looks like he's going to be getting the second one too and if the Grim Snarl is one of those variants that only runs a single screen, um, this would also be a perfect opportunity to try and catch the uh, either the Tornadus or the Incineroar thing like a uh, Thunder Wave or possibly an attack. Al mm -hmm. Flavio is really on the back foot this turn as he has to get that Incineroar off the field. Otherwise, it's going to be knocked out by the Pelipper really e easily and uh, really hurt Flavio's matchup against the Zacian in the back. And uh, that's going to be a tough call to make. Oh, as we're gonna be seeing the hurricane go into that Pelipper, doesn't quite pick up the KO there, but deals so much substantial damage as the Incineroar now opts to go for the parting shot into this Grimmsnarl. Grimmsnarl right now uh, at minus two of its attack, so it is not gonna be able to deal as much damage as it would like if it has opted to go for this. But more importantly, we're gonna be seeing Flavio have that free pivot switch and will actually be bringing the Terina in to try to change things up and uh, gain a bit more momentum finally you need to try to get rid of or should i say just cause damage onto alex's side as oh my lord we see alex Aww. very happy about the hurricane focus into the arena you see the disappointment in flavio's face right there as the spirit break comes out from the dream style goes into that tornado we'll be bringing its uh, special attack down to minus one and alex all of a sudden once again pushing that momentum and spain into becoming champions when you think about it that wasn't necessarily a risky play because that if that incineroar had stayed in a hurricane would have done plenty of damage as well it wouldn't have been a knock that incineroar within uh from something like the zashin so a uh, really great play there from alex catching that serena switch in and as a result really opening this game up particularly for the grim snarl you know we've spirit break we've seen light screen uh it's possible that there is a thunder on that grim snarl side of the field and i keep mentioning that because if he's able to connect thunder wave with kyogre it doesn't even matter if the tornadus goes for a tailwind this turn uh it's going to oh no oh my god <laughs> oh my lord we see the reveal of the wide guard 
absolutely ignoring that water spout. You can see once again a disappointment in Flavia's face right there. That is such a big move to reveal. Quite unfortunate from uh, Kyoga not even able to utilize itself in this turn. And now it's locked in choice wow. specs as well, Gabby. So Alex is just pushing forwards and Flavio, it just doesn't have the right countermeasures to all of Alex's uh, current, you know, like uh, viability with his movesets. The interesting thing, though, is that Pelipper's at such low health that even a second wide guard here, while it would stop the Kyogre from attacking this turn, uh, it, Kyogre could theoretically stay in. Tornadoes could go for the KO onto the Pelipper, and then that uh, water spout would be viable again. Uh, but the Grim Snarl, I think, is the Pokemon to keep an eye out for here because we don't know that much about it. A Spirit Break into the Kyogre wouldn't do a lot of damage, but that special attack drop would certainly help. And, uh, you know, there's still the light screen up as well. So even at full health, we know that the Zacian would not be one hit knocked out by that water spout. And that wide guard, not bodyguard, ladies and gents, that's just a language situation, uh, does come out right there. As the Tornadoes goes for the Hurricane into the Grimmsnarl, picks up the confusion, so this may stop this Grimmsnarl in its tracks, which it does, so at least there is something going on for Flavio's side right now. The burn, not quite enough to pick up the KO there, but it will uh, in this following turn uh, right now. Or a fake out will pick up that knockout and then again the game opens back up for Kyogre I think the big question is though is what's the best position that Flavio can send the Kyogre back out onto the field and you know the, the number of turns have started adding up It's possible that we could see light screen run out in a couple of turns by which point the Kyogre would make an appearance uh, The Tornadus it has been going pretty consistently for speed control. So we know that um, even an Icy Wind would be enough to turn things into Kyogre's favor. So it's not necessarily over for Fabio. It's just that uh, he's going to have to be very careful plays out these next couple of turns. Oh, exactly. As he's going to be going for the fake out into the Grimstone, makes a lot of sense. Icy Wind, very, very cool move. As it picks up the KO wow. onto that Pelipper, <laughs> does drop this speed on that Grimstone, um yet again right now. So in this situation, at least P Flavio does have a bit more ground that he was able to obtain during this turn. But we do have to, of course, uh, make, uh, well, he has to make sure that he's able to answer all of Alex's situations where he's got the Zion now on the field maybe even get up that tailwind if possible but you have to try to time it correctly to when the light screen will end as you see flavio does give a quick check there three turns remaining three turns remaining and i think that the magic number for tailwind would actually be two turns uh so going for an icy wind is probably the preferred play for this particular turn uh, i think that flavio also as much as he probably wants to try and rotate out this incineroar to get more intimidates to get more access to fake out um i think he just has to go for the flare blitz into that zosh in this turn and accept that he might end up losing the incineroar as a result uh getting that extra little bit of chip damage onto the zosh will mean that even if the kyogre comes in early that water spout will still be a knockout and that is exactly what his win condition is at this point in time yeah, as we're going to be seeing Alex now switch in the Rillaboom for that Grim Snarl. So wanting to maybe preserve it for future turns, maybe even, of course, I'd get any following uh, light screen or reflects up. As the Zacian actually opts to go for that very safe protect right now. It understands the situation. It doesn't want to get caught out. But guess what? Flavio goes for the Icy Wind right now over on his side oh, of the field. Tailwind. Oh my lord, it is Tailwind. I apologize. I think I saw the gelato and it got me off guard there. As, yes, uh, the Tailwind does come out and uh, I think that may have been a Flare Blitz focus into the Zacian's Protect. Exactly. Um, that, that's exactly what it was. And I like that the Tailwind has been set up, but, you know, Flavio is still in a position where a Fake Out plus a Play Rough on that Zacian could threaten a KO onto the Incineroar. Uh, so even though the Tailwind does mean that the uh, T Tornadus and the Incineroar most likely will be outspeeding that Zacian, um, it's still going to be a tough spot for uh, Flavio to find that opportunity to send the Kyogre in. Um, if he goes for a hard switch, I also worry that he'll get caught off guard by that Rillaboom. So if that is indeed what he locked into, he has to be very, very confident about what Alex is doing going into this turn. 
Oh, he will definitely have to be as the rain has now been reset onto the field, but from Kyoda instead. As the Rillaboom goes for the fake out into that Kyoda slot. Okay, it wasn't any brass type move there. That makes a lot of sense. Hurricane follows up, but of course, with such a dropped special attack output, it makes a lot of sense. It's not able to do much. And guess what? The play rough is more than enough to pick up the K on Kyoda. And oh my lord, it's all of the momentum in Alex's favor to try and seal this game off not only seal this game off i believe this will also seal the set in spain's favor yeah this is so incredibly close and flavio just trying to sneak that kyogre out onto the field but uh unfortunately got caught with a knockout and even survive turn he would still have to worry about the grassy glide from that rillaboom uh, knowing that it took so little damage from that hurricane does most likely mean it is holding the assault fest, which uh, also would mean that it probably would take another two or three turns if we're even lucky to pick up that knockout. So Alex uh, is so close to winning this tournament for his country. All he has to do is keep his eyes on the prize. Don't get caught off guard by any weird fake outs or any weird switches or any hurricane and uh, hopefully it smooth sailing beyond that well exactly as we are to be seeing alex go ahead and switch the grim snarl in right now wanting to preserve that zashian and it is subject to that hurricane right there i don't see any confusions and neither any sort of uh, serious damage the double up does come out though does pick up a ko but this rillaboom has been left to its own devices it may uh, go for that u-turn here to try to reposition and it does which is so so good right now for alex's side and it's as he's gonna have that fake out available to himself yet again and even that pressure from uh the grass type moves there so in this scenario i think this is why play rough pays off on a zashian ladies and gents it just it absolutely deals so much damage and picks up one hit ko's onto kyoga's left right and center Exactly. It turned what was a tough matchup, honestly, into a matchup in Zashin's favor. Uh, the fact that he caught the Kyogre on the Switch certainly helped, but even if you think back to that game one, we saw Zashin able to take a Choice Specs boosted Water Spout from a Kyogre and still have enough health to attack. So hypothetically, if that situation had played out here in game two... Play rough would have been able to get that knockout regardless. Mm. Uh, Flavio's options this turn are slowly out. A icy wind, if uh, unflinched by the fake out, uh, could certainly help this Incineroar maybe get the upper hand against Ashen later turns once the rain is off the field and that flare blitz is a viable option. I mean, Flare Blitz also would deal big damage to the Rillaboom at this point. So I think forced to wait out the rain, which uh, I'm not even sure that given to him. Flavio going for the confusion right now. Ooh. I think, oh, he got it. But let's see if uh, Alex Zashian does hit itself in confusion to try to give him any sort of situation uh. to win this. But no, Play Rough comes out from the Zashian into the Incineroar, drops uh, the attack of the Incineroar, which is not what you commonly see. Uh. Very low chance to do that as a secondary effect from that Play Rough. But of course, in this situation, Alex still has momentum. That Hurricane dealt no damage whatsoever. And Flavio is just down to these final two Pokemon. He needs to try to get that damage output or some seriously good RNG in favor of himself. I think it would have to be miraculous RNG on it. I, I'm like trying to what the win condition would be at this point. The Zacian would essentially have to hit itself in enough times for rain to run out and a single behemoth blade is going to prove that theory wrong almost immediately. Yeah, as the, like you said, Behemoth Blade wipes out the Tornadus, and we're going to be seeing Incineral coming up as well from what it looks like. It's got so little gas in the chamber. We see the drum beating actually coming out right now, being able to drop the speed, not pick up the KO, and you can see the happiness and the excitement in Alex's face to what this means. It may even be going down to its own Flare Blitz recoil, which it does. Gabby, we have your your first victory road world champions uh, of course thanks to alex gomez the co-manager of spain my lord what a way to go ahead and win it all
That was an absolutely insane set. And shout outs to both Alex and Flavio as I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. Uh, that was just so well played from both these trainers. But it just goes to show you how much preparation I think went into the team building aspect of this matchup. You know, Alex did give himself access to play rough. Um, we don't know what other moves the Zacian had. It's possible it could still have had substitute and protect. It could have been uh, maybe a damage dealing move otherwise. But uh, still, play rough just made this matchup completely viable against the Kyogre and against the Serena. And uh, that plus a couple of well predicted switches on Alex's behalf has brought him and his country to victory here today. So congratulations to Alex and to Spain, because this has been absolutely a pleasure to watch and cast. What a way to go all through and crown yourself. The manager being able to bring that deciding win. Of course, we do still have one match left that we are going to be featuring, but of course, that doesn't change the main importance of the result, that Spain are now your first Victory Road World Champions. And the level of play from both players was absolutely phenomenal. It was so, so intense every single turn in and out. Uh, they both did very well. Obviously, um, Alex was able to go ahead and gain that advantage i think his movement in general the repositioning was super spot on i don't think there was a solid way that flavio could break his uh, screen setup from the grim style and i think uh boy uh, was mentioning i don't know what grim style can bring to this matchup it's like no 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 we can now see what it brings it brings up that very good secure uh you know like screen setup and just mitigation of damage so it, it just proved to be so so vital flavio ran out of options we had wide guard yeah. pedal pop out from nowhere you can't do much when your choice spec locked into water spout with your Kyogre. no and i mean the grim sorrow almost felt like it was perfectly built for this matchup because not only was it relying on light screen it also had spirit break to lower the special yeah. attack as well so. uh this pokemon was there purely to support zashin and to take a unwinnable matchup very very achievable game and uh to that i think uh that grim snarl and palipper get credit i mean how many times can you say that palipper was actually the winning pokemon when you think about it in a matchup like this <laughs> well yeah well apparently it is indeed the combined <laughs> version of both tornadus and Kyogre. So it's i mean it proved it it absolutely <laughs> proved it. it they went ahead at uh, at minus one i believe gabby uh, it still picked up a ko on an incineroar <laughs> yeah in the rain with weather ball like how is it not used more often i don't understand <laughs> well i look forward to seeing it in what little we have left um and possibly when series 10 comes back again because i don't even know what to predict at this point <laughs> <laughs> that is so fair. <laughs> but yes, of course, um, uh, recurring formats, maybe even recurring champions. We'll find out next year. But what we're going to do, of course, ladies and gents, we're still going to have the final match, which is going to be between Davide Cautericcio versus Guillermo Castilla. So don't go anywhere. We're going to be finishing off this event with a bang. And we'll be back in just a few short moments.